Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of Northwest Craftsman. A couple years ago I put out a video on how to do a tongue and groove joint using a router table but not using a tongue and groove bit. The tongue and groove bits are definitely the way that you want to go if you have a lot of tongue and groove that you need to make. However, if you don't want to spend that kind of money, there are other ways to do it. That first video focused on doing it with a spiral bit or an up spiral bit and on that video I got an excellent question about whether or not you could do it on a table saw. I had never thought to do this kind of joint on a table saw but I thought I could give it a shot and it was way easier than I expected expected it to be. So today I'm going to show you guys how to do the tongue and groove joint on the table saw, talk through some of the pros and cons at the end, but show you guys just truly how stinking easy it is to do on the table saw. All right, let's get going. So for the purposes of this video, I am just using some two by four. The only thing that you really need to be sure of is what your thickness is on them. These ones are exactly the same at an inch and a half. I've measured them out and they're just about spot on an inch and a half. So you need to know what that thickness is. Next, you want to take that thickness and divide by three. So in this case, we've got at, uh, one, two, three, so one, two, three, all the way through here. And on one and a half inches thick, that means I've got a half inch. Once you have that measurement, you're gonna wanna set your table saw height to exactly that measurement. I like using one of these gauges for setting my height. It's really accurate, really easy. I've got a link to one of those in the description. With that height set, you're going to move your fence into the exact same position. And so for me, it's going to be a half inch, and this is going to be the starting place for all the different cuts. So there's two parts to the tongue and groove. For the tongue, you're going to want to move it one blade thickness shorter than your half inch. And so in my case, I've got one eighth of an inch, and so I'm gonna move it one eighth of an inch that direction. Next up, we have four separate cuts that we're going to be making. One on this side, one on this side, and then two on this face right here. This is where our tongue is going to be. You should also be really careful when you're doing that. These little tiny off cuts, one of them got jammed inside my blade and shot out the back side at, oh, I don't even know how fast, but it was fast enough that on this piece of oak plywood, it left a nice old fat dent in there. So uh, yeah, just be really careful. Don't stand behind it. You could get offshoots on it. Next up for the groove, we're gonna move this back to a half inch, which was that original one third measurement that we took. Then when you're cutting this, you're going to basically cut it one side, the other side, and then what we're going to do is we're going to move the fence out in 1 16th of an inch increments until when we pass it through, there's no more left in the middle. Here's what that looks like. And just like that, you've got a tongue and groove. Okay, so as you guys can see, it is really, really easy to get a tongue and groove using the table saw, far easier than I was expecting it to, but there is one primary downside that I see, and that is that your tolerances are a lot harder to hit repeatedly because you're constantly adjusting your fence and moving your fence around, and not to mention on the router table, when I'm moving the router up and down, I have a much tighter control over how far it moves as opposed to on the table saw, I've got probably a 64th of an inch that I can move it around, um, but that'd be moving it really tightly. And then if I'm trying to work on multiple different pieces and I want one to fit with the other, I only want to adjust it a couple of different times. And so that's probably the biggest downside to this method is that it doesn't really allow you to get a lot of precision to it. If you set up some jigs and you really were to work with it, you could probably set the fence up consistently every time so that you got a really good tight fit the way that you wanted it to. But again, all of that depends. Sometimes you want a loose fit so that as the wood expands and contracts, it has a little bit of space to move around. And other times you want a really tight, snug fit so that things don't go anywhere. So totally depends up to you. But I I hope you guys learned something during this video. Using the table saw, super, super easy to do a tongue and groove. I learned a lot. Thank you for asking the question. I really do appreciate it. It's those types of questions that get me thinking, get my juices flowing, and really make me think about what can I do. And then when I learn something new, I like to share it with you guys. So please ask questions on the videos that I have. How did I do it? How did I set it up? What if you did it differently like this? All of those things are awesome. Thank you guys tons. If you guys saw the shirt that I was wearing, we've got our own merch. 
Go ahead and check out the link in the description if you'd like to get your own Northwest Craftsman merchandise. Uh, we really appreciate it. I barely make any money on it. Mostly, I just want to get it out to you guys. So I have a couple of bucks that I think I make on it, but that's really just to cover the differences in shipping it to different parts of the United States and around the world. I actually need to double check to make sure that I've got worldwide shipping. If you're somewhere else in the world besides the United States and you want merchandise, I'll figure out a way to get you guys merch. So thank you guys for joining. I really appreciate it. Uh, go make some sawdust. Have a good one.